had the um, real honor of working with um, Yaiza on, on the series on hematology in Africa. So we had a lot of discussion as to how we should structure it um, and how we can try and identify the priorities of um, hematology, particularly hematology care in um, Sub-Saharan Africa. So um, I am obviously very, very biased because I work in hematology and I've been working in hematology for the past um, 16, 18 years. And um, when I was um, thinking about um, writing the commentary, which I had the um, honor of working with um, Dr. Grace Moshi, Professor Grace Moshi, who is a, a um, proper hematologist, Tanzanian born, and has had a lot of work and experience working in um, Tanzania, South Africa, Australia, and is currently working in Singapore. She is um, also the, the, the um, adjunct faculty at Mubili University and helping us set up um, the laboratory and the clinical infrastructure for gene therapy. So when we were thinking about the commentary that we wrote for this series, um, I thought about um, what is hematology? And um, I have these three quotes that I, I, I got. If you, any of you are fans of, of um, the book or the film, Bram Stoker's um, Dracula, um, he, Dracula said, blood is life. And that is something that we working in the field of hematology very much believe that. Um, for, um, from the Bible, um, that for the life of the flesh is in the blood, really emphasizing that blood is um, the basis of that. And then William Harvey, who is probably known um, or considered to be the, 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 the one of the main fathers of modern hematology or hematology and blood transfusion, said this. And so I conclude that blood lives and is nourished of itself and in no way depends on any other part of the body as being prior to it or more excellent. So that from this, we may perceive the causes not only of life in general, but also of longer or shorter life, of sleeping and waking, of skill, of strength, and so forth. This, I think, is really, when you, when you start really t um, looking at each of these statements or each of these words, I think it really says a lot about hematology and blood in terms of this, when you look at hematopoietic stem cells, when you look at how and why blood is such an important aspect of, of life and health. So in thinking about hematology and prioritizing, what should we talk about in the series of hematology in Africa? Hematology is one of those conditions that is everywhere. It can be treated at any level and it should be treated at any level. And this is where when you listen to um, the talk and when you read the series by um, the, the review by um, Dr. Mwangi, uh, Martin Mwangi, who, who is talking about iron deficiency. Iron deficiency is the most common form of anemia globally. It's very, very common. And the tragedy about iron deficiency is that most of the time, and we'll hear more about this from Dr. Mwangi, it is treatable, whether it's due to um, infect infestations from hookworms, which is still um, occurring in some places in Africa, but co more commonly, whether it's due to uh, nutritional anemia, which is identifiable and is treatable, or it's due to other causes that may be more, um, more uh, subtle. So when we were thinking about it, when we were thinking about hematology, we were thinking, okay, should we talk about iron deficiency? Should we talk about sickle cell disease? And this um, figure on the left really outlines the different aspects of hematology. And this is really just selected um, aspects of hematology, whether you're talking about bone marrow failure syndrome, such as pancytopenia and um, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, which is an area of expertise of Professor Lucio Luzato and Dr. Moshungi Ali, whether you're talking about red blood cell disorders and you'll hear from um, Professor Ambrose Walcom about um, sickle cell disease, whether we're talking about white blood cell disorders, and here we're talking about um, hematological disorders or hematological cancers, and um, Professor Jackson Oram, who runs the University 
um, the Uganda Cancer Institute will talk about um, the hematological cancers that they're managing in Uganda. And then the most important thing is really blood transfusion. And Dr. Yvonne from Uganda is really um, one of the um, first investigators um, leading the blood safe um, initiative from the NIH, NHLBI, where they are looking to conduct health research in blood transfusion in Africa. Dr. Yvonne from um, Ghana has led and is leading a group of investigators that are looking at the implementation research questions around blood transfusion. And so we'll hear about this um, um, from her, her presentation and you'll be able to read about this in, in her review. So when we think about hematology, whether it's hematology as a discipline in itself, whether it is part of internal medicine in adults or part of pediatrics in children, whether it's a key component of surgery, and we know that it has a major, major aspect when you look at the um, top causes of, um, of maternal mor uh, morbidity and mortality, it is maternal anemia and it is um, post or peripartum hemorrhage. So blood, I know I'm biased, but blood really is life. So what we, what we also wanted to do as part of this series was to make sure that not only did we not um, focus just on tertiary healthcare facilities, but we also wanted to make sure that there is, to a certain extent, a continuum of care. And so um, when you look at, when you read the series or, or, the, or the four articles, you will see how the work that is being done at Uganda Cancer Institute, the work that is, that is being done in um, centers of excellence um, in, in, in sickle cell disease, the work that is being done in, in um, iron deficiency anemia really touches on all the um, three levels of healthcare in terms of healthcare facilities as well as home-based care. So this is what we ended up um, identifying. And as I said, this is really just the beginning of trying to disentangle all the achievements or highlight all the achievements that have been made in hematology in Africa and identifying the gaps and the opportunities that we can um, um, take advantage of. So um, um, Grace Moshi and myself um, 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 wrote the commentary and then you will hear from um, Dr. Martin Wangi who will talk about um, iron deficiency anemia. Again, um, referring to what we're talking about, the pan-African nature of of um, this series, as well as um, as, as well as H three Africa and African Society of Human Genetics, Dr. Ma Martin Wangi is originally or genetically from um, Kenya, but he's working in Malawi, and as um, as we speak now, he's actually in in transit in Netherlands, um, going to um, a meeting. Then um, blood cancers and um, Professor Jackson Oram is um, the director of the Uganda Cancer Institute, which is really a flagship um, um, organization in East Africa, in, um, in um, Africa, that is really identifying um, and, and treating um, cancers. And these are all cancers. And he will talk about um, their experience in, in, uh, in treating hematological cancers in Uganda. Um, you all know um, Professor Ambrose Wonkam. He is um, a medical geneticist in, um, in South Africa, and he and his colleagues have talked about sickle cell disease from the research perspective, the hematological perspective, and it really is a fantastic um, review that, I have, that they have done, identified what are the key areas that we have made progress and what are the key areas that we need to strengthen. Finally, and, and um, Professor Wonkam is um, in the top right hand corner, um, Dr. Mwangi um, is on the top left corner. And then this is an image from the Uganda Cancer Institute. Um, on the right, um, um, bottom left corner, right corner, is um, Dr. Yvonne, um, who runs the blood transfusion um, program in Uganda and really is, um, as I said, the a lead um, and one of the principal investigators of. Um, one of the blood safe um, consortia, really making fantastic um, strides in implementation research around blood transfusion, bearing in mind that there has been extensive strengthening of blood transfusion services across countries in Africa because of um, ensuring safe blood as part of the um, 
um, prevention of, of tra horizontal transmission of, of, of um, um, HIV. So when we were um, talking about the series and when we were discussing this with, with um, Lancet Hematology and then with the investigate and then with the um, authors, we wanted and we wanted them to emphasize the fact that um, we in Africa have taken either directly, indirectly, an integrated approach to um, hematology in Africa. Priority is really providing and improving the um, standard of care. So under healthcare, um, here's an image of um, exchange blood transfusion for sickle cell disease. This was done manually in, um, in Aga Khan Hospital in, in Tanzania in August with, with um, um, investigators, doctor, um, I mean doctors, um, Dr. Freddy Luoga and Dr. Mashungi Ali, as well as um, the, the patient who, who, who um, um, received the manual exchange transfusion with the mentorship and, and supervision online by um, doc, uh, Professor Lucho Luzato. So um, training, and um, here I'll refer to what um, Chris has mentioned about really at the center of, of everything that we do is training, education, and improving capacity of the many, many people who have and have been working and are working in hematology and blood transfusion. And the picture here is an image from a fantastic conference that we had in Tanzania in 2018 called the Advances. It wasn't a conference, it was a course, Advances in Hematology in Africa. And this is a cause that um, advances in hematology is a cause that has been running for more than uh, uh, 50 years in, in London at the Hammersmith Hospital, where both myself, Lucho and Grace um, worked there. Obviously, Lucho was the head of the department, and this was at different times. And so when we um, decided that we would have um, the cause advances in hematology in Africa, it was very daunting. But we were very, very pleased because we were able to have the course in, in 2018 and we were able to run this course and have really top, top class um, speakers attend the course. Fumi Olopade, who is in the middle and who you will hear speaking as part of um, this conference. Um, Dr. Magdalena Limo, who is now head of the blood transfusion service in Tanzania. Dr. Stella Rezaula, who is the first female hematologist in Tanzania. And Dr. Hadidia Mwinula, who is a um, pediatrician with an expertise in um, pediatric hematology. Dr. Grace Boshi is on the right hand side. And so really looking at short term training, long term training and trying to highlight that there has been training that has been ongoing in hematology in Africa. In terms of research, again, throughout the four speakers, you will hear how research has really been at the core of the work that they have been doing in the various disciplines. This is an, a, a map that shows um, the work that Ambrose and I have been doing really with colleagues, amazing, amazing colleagues in South Africa, Tanzania, Ghana, Nigeria. With support from the NHLBI in the NIH, we've been able to set up a Pan-African um, consortium and we have been able to enroll more than 13,000 individuals with sickle cell disease across different ages, across three countries. And this is really the largest um, um, cross-sectional um, enrollment or registry of sickle cell patients in the world. And it's really a pleasure that we do. One of the things that is, is, is important for me to mention here is the role that Solomon Ofori Aqua, who you will hear about, uh, who will be speaking later um, during the conference um, in the next couple of days, but when we were writing the grant um, for, for, um, for Sparkle and Sadak, the resources and the experience and expertise from Solomon was absolutely critical in the success that we had in getting the grants. So um, thank you to Solomon of Oriakwa for, for his um, input and his support in making Sickle in Africa possible. Um, advocacy is something that, again, you will hear about. Very important, and advocacy is at three levels. Um, here's a photograph of um, um, Professor Jackson Oram from the Uganda Cancer Institute um, from a paper educating the public about the work and the services available at Uganda Cancer Institute. 
um, with healthcare providers that, and, 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 and um, investigators who uh, work at UCI. Um, working with the community, and here we're talking about really the community of um, individuals who are affected by disorders, whether it's a chronic disorder such as sickle cell disease, or it's um, a, 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 a chronic disorder like, like a, a cancer, whether it's a chronic um, lymphocytic leukemia, or whether it's um, a community of, of acute illnesses such as iron deficiency anemia. And here um, we have also communities of blood donors where we want to make sure that we have long-term blood donors. We have set up a registry of, of blood donors so that we can strengthen the, 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 the um, um, bone marrow donor registry. And this picture shows Dr. Emmanuel Balandia, who is the principal investigator in Tanzania, um, with the workshop that he um, was involved with, with Arafa Salim and Daima in training and um, providing education to patients with sickle cell disease in Tanzania. And again, this is work that is echoed across um, countries in Africa. Finally, in terms of um, advocacy, high level engagement, um, we heard today from the Tanzania Society of Human Genetics, from the Minister of Health um, of, of Zanzibar, as well as from um, the um, president of, of um, Tanzania, the former president of Tanzania, um, President Kikwete, his representative, um, Ambassador Togolani. And here, um, again, this was a, a, a visit to the NIH that was made possible by Ambassador Ogolani, where the President um, Kikwete, as well as other heads of state, as part of the um, Africa Summit that was organized by President Barack Obama at that time, visited the NIH um, and heard um, about the work that the NIH is doing in Africa and the potential opportunities for partnership. And so this is a picture with the NIH director, Dr. Francis Collins, and the director of NHLBI, Dr. Gary Gibbons, and the director of Fogarty, Dr. Roger Glass. So uh, in terms of education and training, um, this is something that is, 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 is um, important. And here we've just given an example of formal um, training. Um, this is like a training at academic um, 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 institutions. So training of doctors, training of laboratory scientists and training of nurses. And what we wanted to emphasize here is that there is an importance of training for hematology and blood transfusion at all levels, undergraduate, postgraduate, and postdoctoral. But then we recognize also that we also have to strengthen education and training at all levels, primary health care and in the different specialities. And again, we have looked at and we have learned from H3 Africa, we've learned from existing models um, on how we can train hematologists in blood transfusion in all these areas. Um, this is a fantastic slide that, that you will see in, in, in the commentary that um, from Dr. Grace Moshi, really looking at the importance of par partnerships. We are lucky that many countries in Africa have very strong public health um, systems. The advantage of public health systems is that they exist. The disadvantage is that they need to be strengthened. And so almost all the investigators or all the reviewers um, um, that, that, that will speak work either with public health institutions or work very, very closely with public health institutions. And, um, and so really looking at vaccination programs with hematology care, establishment of disease registries, and how we can integrate government laboratory in managing and prioritizing hematological care. In terms of capacity building, and here we're really talking not just human capacity, but capacity in terms of looking at manufacturing medicines and vaccines. And here we have examples in Nigeria, examples in Tanzania, and really the fantastic examples with the COVID-19 vaccine in um, South Africa with regards to manufacturing medicines on the continent for the continent. And then in terms of research, we really emphasized that the focus of the series is hematological care, but it has to be integrated with research in the sense that you can't say, let me just improve healthcare and then I will start doing the research or the other way around. Let me do research and then I will translate my knowledge into 
improving healthcare. No, we said, and this is um, approach that we used in sickle cell disease with a paper that's written by um, Dr. Foreni Tuluai, where she looks at how an integrated um, approach in sickle cell disease has helped in terms of strengthening research as well as health healthcare and um, training. And then finally, the partnerships that we mentioned before, partnerships at different levels in different ways, and the importance of this in order to ensure sustainability. So finally, really just want to say a bit about science. And I am absolutely fascinated. And if you have time, please look at this short video that um, um, is available on, on, on the, um, the link there. And this was a, a video where um, Francois was asked, um, why is she obsessed or why is she looking to find a cure for HIV? And this is, um, I quote, where she said, we are not making science for science. We're making science for the benefit of humanity. If you are working on human disease, you must have a relationship with people living with the disease. And this is because the patients with HIV went to her and said, you identified the virus and because of that discovery she um, received the nobel prize in in 2008 they said you identified the virus what are you going to do about it you have to find a cure for for this and i think this is where a lot of the And this is where, um, as an example, and you'll hear a lot about this um, from um, the talk by um, Ambrose, is in hematology in Africa, when we're searching for a cure, whether this is for iron deficiency, anemia, whether this is for sickle cell disease, whether this is for hematological um, cancers, um, how are we going to find a cure for some of the hematological disorders? Who's going to do it? Where are we going to do it? When are we going to do it? Is this in the next three years or is it in the next 10 years? What are we going to do? What are we going to prioritize? Are we going to prioritize hemophilia and gene therapy and the fantastic work that is already being done in, in, um, in, in, Cape Town, in, in Johannesburg by Johnny Machlangu? Or is it going to be um, leukemia with work that is being done by um, Anna Shu and colleagues? How are we going to do this? And as an example, this is a figure that focuses, I'm biased, obviously, on sickle cell disease and in Tanzania, where we started answering those questions around gene therapy for sickle cell disease. We had the advances in hematology course in 2018. We had the gene editing workshop in 2020. And we identified two hospitals where we can do gene therapy and participate in gene therapy trials. And then in terms of who and how, we have been very, very fortunate with Professor Lucho Luzato being in Tanzania, uh, Marina Cabazzana, who, 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 who did the first successful transplant in France, um, visited us and um, attended the, the advances in hematology course in, um, in 2018 with Elian Gluckman, who's um, renowned for um, transplants, and um, Grace Moshi, who um, is my co-author for the commentary, and Dr. Siana, who is um, a really fantastic and the president of the Tanzania Society of Human Genetics, as well as being an excellent, excellent scientist. So really trying to look at how we do this, where we do this, when, how we're going to fund this, and working with entities such as H3Africa, um, the Global Gene Therapy Initiative, to making this a reality in Africa. So thank you very much for listening. I think I've taken a long time, but we're very fortunate, touch wood, that we're, um, we've got enough time. This is Grace and myself um, at a meeting in 2019 in, in Rome. This was a meeting that was organized by, by um, Elian um, Gluckman, really looking at how we can make transplant and gene therapy accessible um, globally. And um, want to thank individuals community healthcare providers, researchers, government, industry, NGOs, funders, who have really supported us. Sickle in Africa, H3 Africa, H3 Bowen, and Sickle Gen Africa are all supported by the US National Institutes of Health. And the Sickle Soil Program in Tanzania received support in the setup um, by the Wellcome Trust. So thank you very much, everyone, for listening to me. Thank you.